What's going on people in YouTube land? Kim Chi Chris here with a brand new video for you. Welcome, 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 welcome. And for today's video, as part of one of the finales of Birthday Destruction Week 2017, I wanted to show you guys something and actually start a series of videos. I've, uh, I felt like I've been gloating a little bit on the channel recently because I've just been showing off stuff that I've gotten recently with like the KISS collection updates, the vinyl updates, things like that. And uh, I'm just going to tell you something right now. It's not going to stop anytime soon. I'm a collector and I love showing off my collection and I, I got to be honest, I'm a nerd that likes watching these videos on YouTube as much as creating them, honestly. I like watching them probably more than creating them. I like seeing these people with uh, these collections of things, be it records or toys or video games or in this case musical instruments and I like hearing the stories behind them. The stories are what's you know, interesting to me. That's what's very interesting about these videos. And uh, as a result, I'm going to start a series of videos that honestly, this doesn't have a long lifespan because I don't have like a hundred guitars or anything. I'm no Rick Nielsen here, but I wanted to do a series showing off my guitar collection to you guys and basically telling you guys the story of each guitar, the stories behind them, why they're important to me, or maybe why they're not important to me. And I figured for the first installment of this, uh, what better place to start than with my favorite guitar and one that was a very pivotal part of my first band I was ever a big part of and uh, let's just dive right into it and see what's important about these guitars to me and why they're awesome. Alright and for the first guitar today you, you see it right here already it's this beauty that's usually sitting behind me in this case here uh, but we have it here in the flesh look at that I'm gonna probably like impose a better shot than just me holding it because there's only so much space here but uh this is my favorite guitar this is my favorite guitar this is my gibson this is my gibson les paul studio my favorite guitar this is my favorite thing that i own now i know there's going to be some like guitar nerds out there that say things like oh it's a studio it's not really that important it's not that great blah 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 gibson sucks give me this give me that I don't really care, man, because for the type of rock and roll that I like to play when I'm playing rock and roll, and I mean the no frills, plug it in, play it, no crap, you know, the type of style that I love, Kiss, Cheap Trick, you know, ACDC, Danko Jones, that kind of stuff, this is the best guitar for that, it's undeniable, you know that, you can't deny that. And this guitar just sounds so good. This is a great sounding guitar, when I plug it into my orange amp, you just you can't deny it. You can't deny the power of a Gibson. It's just, it's impossible. And uh, it's its my favorite. It's my go-to guitar when I play electric. I've honestly never played it live though. I only do it at home or in the studio because this thing's a pricey guitar. Now some people would say it's not. It's not a White Falcon. It's not a 56 Les Paul, etc. But for me, this is an expensive guitar. I don't think I could afford to replace it very easily. And on top of all that, it has some sentimental value because this is what my parents got me for graduating college. Yes, I'm a very educated person. I graduated college and now I make silly YouTube videos. But uh, at the end of the day, this is a, you know, has some emotional value to it. I mean, I remember at the time thinking, uh, they said, you know, we got you a small present, you know, small, small uh, for me. And uh, I remember at the time thinking it was gonna be a new phone. I needed a new phone at the time. And uh, I just was figuring it was gonna be like an iPhone of some sort or something. and. Uh, you know, I didn't realize it was going to be something that I would hold on to and cherish my whole life. So, uh, you know, I don't know that they even watch the channel, but I'm going to bug them to watch this one. Thanks, parents. Thanks for this gift. Uh, you know, um, obviously this came more uh, from the dad, but uh, the mom knew it was important too. She just knew he had more, he had better taste. He's the one that plays guitar. So it has some emotional attachment and uh, it's just a great instrument. I mean, you feel power when you hold this thing. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen the stand-up routine from Henry Rollins when he's talking about Walmart of all things and he says yeah when you walk through the doors of Walmart you feel powerful and that's that's what a Gibson Les Paul does to you. I mean you hold this thing and you you know you just hit that that D chord and uh, if it's plugged into an amp at a high volume it's over. It is over. You know, rock and roll is what's happening. It's great for rock and roll. It's great for metal. It's great for everything in between. It's great for punk rock. Uh, you know, Gibsons aren't really known for acoustic settings or pop music, but they're used in everything these days. And uh, I love this guitar. It's my favorite instrument ever. And uh, I'd be very sad if it went away, uh, you know, but uh, I know nothing lasts forever, you know, and uh, you never know. Something could happen to it, but I protect this thing. Uh, to the best of my abilities so that nothing happens to it because this is just this is a this is a valuable thing to me. I love this guitar. It's Gibson 
white studio, favorite guitar, gold inlays, love it. It's a sexy beast. Better looking than most women that I meet, honestly. This guitar is where it's at. Now, I could talk about this guitar for the next hour or two, but uh, there's no reason for that. Uh, you know, everybody knows what a Gibson is. Everybody knows about the power of a Gibson. But uh, I'm going to move on now from one of my absolute best, most valuable instruments I own to honestly one of the crappiest ones I own, but that has a good chunk of sentimental value to it. Uh, so let's just, you know, get this guy out of the way. You see how I did that simultaneously? I added this guy to the guitar stand and never even broke eye contact with you. So we got him out of the way and let's move on to something that also is a white guitar. See, there was a, a bit of a theme going there. And uh, it has a lot of sentimental value on this one. It's kind of a piece of crap. It's beat to Hades and back and I did most of that to it. And it's this thing here. This thing here that I don't even know what brand it is. No clue what brand this is. It's obviously an SG, you know, shape. And uh, the reason this guitar is important to me is it was a filling guitar when I was in one of my first bands, uh, The Manpower, and this was a filling guitar that I used on stage for quite a while, and it has a lot of dings, a lot of bruises, and a lot of customizations that are all part of me, and I did all this to it, and uh, when you play in a loud punk rock, rock and roll band, it's awesome. Every battle scar is worth it. So let's just look at some of the cool stuff on here. There's a lot of stickers, a lot of things on it, so uh, let's just start at the top here. So it has, let's see if I can get that in the shot, has a custom like sexy like trucker girl there like put on to the actual guitar itself and uh, if you look in a little closer uh, right here you see like these stains and these dings well that's blood it's definitely blood from uh, being crazy on stage that's, that's what it is uh, and uh, these these tuners were actually added on custom as well just to make this thing kind of worth the crap and uh, when you get to the back of the neck it has a dinged up sticker from my old band the manpower there notice it has the MySpace on there, that should tell you how old it is. Uh, and then on the back as well, I don't know if this will come out the right way, but it says, I'm easy. Put on there with uh, duct tape, because that's the rock and roll punk rock way to do it, of course. And uh, then on the front uh, here, you have, or actually the, the side, if we can get that in there, yeah, we can. Has a sticker from said old band, it says, indie rock is a sin. <laughs> it's pretty great. Uh, you have on there another, another manpower sticker. Uh, you have a sticker from the Princess Mononoke, like forest creatures, whatever those were, and then I like that the switch here for the knobs is broke off, because again, I, this thing has places all over it. And I love this guitar as a result. It's probably not the best sounding guitar in the world at all. It's some weird off brand, and I actually haven't plugged it in in a really long time. I kind of want to restring it and plug it into a nice amp, like my orange amp that I have now or something, just to see what it sounds like. Uh, but it has quite the sentimental value. I played this on so many stages across the country with the manpower and uh, it's all a lot of use and uh, there are so many pieces of damage on it because I knew that I didn't really need like a nice guitar on stage. I didn't really need like a Gibson for example. I needed something that could take a punishment and continue on because funny enough before this I had an Epiphone SG that literally the neck, I split the neck in half on stage. It just it split in part on me and this piece of crap off brand has lasted so much longer than that and that's no put down to Epiphone uh, but it's just kind of funny it kind of goes to show you you can never judge a book by its cover or a guitar by its brand and uh, like I said I'm gonna try to plug this thing in at some point and just see what it sounds like I'm curious now I uh, used to have a strap for it that was like kind of a uh, like leopard print or zebra print black and white thing kind of like something you'd see uh, you know, on a glam band in the 80s because essentially that's what the manpower was. So, still have this guitar. I'm never going to get rid of this thing. I kind of would like to just hang it on the wall at some point because it's more of a display piece than anything. It's nostalgia. It's a collector's piece. But uh, for me, it's the ultimate collector's piece because I am the ultimate collector of all of my own bands. And uh, not a lot of people own a manpower guitar, a manpower signature guitar here. So, uh, that's a great thing to have. So let's just throw it aside. Now let's, uh, no, let's just set it aside. I probably could throw it. This thing has been thrown and it'd probably be safe, but uh, let's not do that. Let's not add more damage to it in 2017. So there you have it. Part one of my guitar collection. Now on all these videos, I'm never going to get technical about the specs on them, the types of pickups, the this, the that. I'm more going to tell you the stories uh, behind the guitars and why they're important to me and why I keep them in my collection after all of these years in some cases. So. I hope you enjoyed that. 
Let me know in the comments below if you maybe have something similar to these or something about your guitars. Maybe even give me a link to one of your guitar videos. I'd love to see those. I love nerding out on those videos, especially the ones with stories. And uh, give this video a thumbs up because rock and roll is rad, guitars are rad, and kimchi chris is rad. And uh, definitely hit that subscription button so you actually, you know, hopefully get some videos down the road and hit the little bell so you get the updates. Uh, again, my name is Kimchi Chris. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next video.